Here's a very typical example of what spot etching looks like in a swimming pool. Uh, obviously, this pool has been drained. We're getting ready to resurface it. And what we see here is, is a circle, the spot. It originated much smaller around a grain of sand where the calcium hydroxide was. And then it so slowly started to etch and leach out the calcium hydroxide in the region all the way around that sand aggregate, and it got bigger and bigger. Eventually, these spots start to connect, and you have big areas of etching off the surface. And so they start small, and then they eventually grow together. The area around it's darkened a bit, and if we look inside there, you'll see there's some moisture retention. That's a fixable problem, though. The darker area, if we take a torch to that, it'll actually pull the moisture out. The etching is not repairable. Uh, that once the material has been pulled out, that is permanent. Another very common thing we'll see, you'll see this actually a calcium nodule right here. Very often we see a lot of spot etching. You'll also see calcium nodule formation where the calcium is being pulled out by the subboundary level. The water is getting in a little tiny fissure or pinhole and is pulling calcium out from underneath out in mass and it causes that calcium nodule. You can also get this if there's delamination. If one layer of plaster is not sticking to what's underneath and it creates a gap or a void space underneath there, that will fill with calcium hydroxide and that could be, pull out calcium also. But how, this is very tight, it's very solid. Uh, there's another nodule here. There's no delamination whatsoever. It's just that aggressive water is pulling and dissolving calcium out, much like a stalactite. Uh, when it comes out here, it runs just down the wall. Gravity takes that and it re-solidifies. But you can see it in the spot etch region. A recent uh, survey amongst pool plasters in Southern California uh, said that probably 60 to 80% of the pools they look at at the time of estimating for replaster has some amount of spot etching. So it's a very common thing that's going to happen. It's not if, but when. Water chemistry... Uh, being fluctuating what it is, we'll have some times it'll be a little on the aggressive side and it'll pull this out, and other times on the scale side. Okay, another place where you see this etching occurred that we talked about is the ITZ, the interfacial transition zone, where plaster comes up to tile. Uh, this area you can see has all been etched. It's bulk with calcium hydroxide, and it's been dissolved out. Now, why is it turning blue? and all these discolorations here. Well, there's a certain amount of minerals in the water, copper sulfate being one of them, and they'll stick to the most porous areas first. That's why the spotting takes on a blue appearance. At first it's white because of the etching, and then it's very porous, and then your minerals, when they're introduced into the water, will stick to these areas first. Great example of an ITZ being etched, uh, followed by general spot etching through the rest of it. But this is very typical, this is what it looks like, and um, this is a great test uh, example to go along with this demonstration. Here's another really good example of etching deterioration, spot etching, and general etching in the whole area. Uh, this top step is a very common uh, problem we see where you have a floating chlorinator uh, that wasn't tethered, it was tied up and it sat in this corner. Well, as you can see, it's got two uh, uh, trichlor tabs in there, which has cyanuric acid in there, which is very, very acidic. And not only did it etch this whole top area, as you can see, and spot etch, but that heavy acid would roll down here and cause all this etching in this area to the point where not only the calcium hydroxide has been dissolved out, but some of the aggregates been dissolved out, and it started spalling or peeling because so much of this Calcium hydroxide's been pulled out in aggregates. It becomes like a honeycomb, um, and there's not a lot of strength to it, and it starts to spall and peel and, uh, and pull back. And you can just see clearly where that floater sat in the corner. Um, these should be tethered. At one time, this was tied up, obviously, someplace in the pool, and it obviously rotted and came off, and it started uh, finding a home right here. And uh, we see this all over the place, and uh, unfortunately, it does destroy that top step. Uh, they'll even hurt a pebble finish. Uh, it, this is a very, very powerful uh, product that's in here that is made to be kept far away from the plaster, more in the deep end of the pool. Um, but you can see this is a very, very typical. Uh, right here, it's extreme etching, uniform etching, because it's so acidic. As it moves away, you start to have general spot etching, uh, where the water dilutes a little bit more, where it's going after the calcium hydroxide um, regions. But right under here, it's dissolving everything. 
great example of what not to do. Um, and that's another solution is you just keep these things away from the top step. That'll also help quite a bit.